Hello, we're going to look at some puppet hair. Hair is something that most puppets need, not all, but most do, and it's a little bit tricky. So here's a couple of solutions for you. Not all solutions, but a couple. You can either use uh, the simplest, often is just using a, a fur fabric. Just make up a wig and sew that on, or glue it on, or whatever. Or, in this case, we're using wool, which is a little bit easier to chroma key because it doesn't have those fine strands. Now that is actually made up of, would you believe, curtain tasseling. You can buy it commercially. I didn't actually buy this. I was fortunate enough to be given it. But it's basically wool sewn like this, and it'll give you a reasonable length. So let's use that. Now depending if you want to have permanent hair on your puppet, or in our case, we use a lot of generics that we just redress. So I make up a lot of wigs. And in this case here, it's just the fur fabric made with that shape pattern there, and sewn together and it will go on nicely. You could make up a base of that out of cloth and sew the curtain material to it, if that was cloth, not fur fabric. Or you could glue or sew it directly to the head of your puppet. Or better for us, who are going to use the wigs over and over again on different puppets, I'm going to take a base, it could be polystone, but in this case it's a ball, a wooden ball, and I'm going to basically make a dome shape that's going to go on it. So I'm going to start by pinning it to the ball with a thumbtack and go around once to start with and then we've got about that's about 20 millimeters where I'm going to attach the bottom part of the wefting web and I'm going to sew it by hand I suppose you could do it by machine but I'm going to do it by hand to the top of the other and successively wind your way around up there so, you just anchor off my thread and then stitch through the bottom one and through the top one to join it, depending on how precisely you want to do it. Find the next point and then and up and through it. Make sure your thread doesn't tangle. And keep moving around, spiraling as you go. And as you get to the top of the crown, you'll find that it starts to bunch up here, gathering. You might be able to, you just got to lay it in and, and gather it in so that it gets smaller and smaller. And when it starts bunching up a bit much, I'm going to run a thread through those little lumps and pull it tight like a drawstring just to bring it in tighter and flatter. Although it's going to be under the hair, so it's not hugely important, but for me, I think it's going to make it a little bit tidier just to sew that on there. Just makes it neater. Then you see, pulling, it pulls in, so I can, can continue. I'll tie that off and just leave it in there for the moment. Tie it off and leave it there for the next pull in, and there it's sitting a bit nicer. Right, I've gone round a little bit further, and now I'm going to pull it in some more, and then the very top is a little bit tricky because it's all bunched up and we want the hair to go on top of and cover that right into a point. And then that last little bit you've basically got to fold things under and fold it so that you're going to be able to just cover that last little piece on the top on the crown. And about now I'm going to snip that off and I might put some a little dab of glue up and down that seam and or both is to use a needle and just stitch and 
bind that around so it's not going to come unraveled and then tuck that under as we then sew the last piece on and then just sew that crown After taking out the thumbtacks, should remove off, and now you have a moppy wig ready to go onto a puppet. But as you can see, he's quite moppy. You can sew it, stitch it, glue it, we pin it usually. Now, if you like the moppy look, you can leave it like that, but I like it so that it doesn't go into the eyes. Just trim it above the eyes and then move it to another side, go, go sideways and trim at the eyes so that you're going to find all the possible ways that it's going to fall in his eyes and just keep it above his eyeballs so that eventually he'll come out with a much better fringe line. But that's up to you to then make them a little bit neater and tidier. But there, the new look. Now, if you can't uh, get hold of this stuff or you can't afford to, to, to buy that from your curtains or from your upholstery store or your curtain store, you can uh, actually make some out of some wool with your sewing machine. So let's make a bit of that. I've got some, this is string use some wool or string. Now take your string and for a short one you're going to say wind it around your hand like this or if you want long hair you could make a great loop like around the back of a chair or something. And then get your scissors and, oops, and chop it through. Now on a sewing machine you put a sheet of paper down there and you're going to lay it down there, one layer thick. Go back to the beginning of the paper and put your foot down on it halfway. So you're going to have both, both lengths the same. And some people, if it's very fine, like if you're using hair, you may have to put another piece on top of that and layer up a whole bunch down here and then put your paper. But this is thick enough so it doesn't get into my machine needle. And then I'm going to basically hold it like that and then very slowly, I'm going backwards now, and go forwards, sewing on top of that, then get some more and put it on the paper and move it into there and just keep going down the length of your paper and then we get to the end of the page I'm just going to go in reverse just to tie that off a bit and then what I'm going to then do is to carefully take that page and right down the seam, flip it all over and then lay it flat bending on that seam of the thread. And go back to your machine. And then about 15 to 20 millimeters in from the edge, I'm going to sew down on top of the paper and the hair. And as I get to the end, I'm going to go backwards, just to tie it in. And I'll run, run a stitch right down the center of it. And then I'm going to take this paper, and then it will sort of down the stitch there. It should sort of unzip like a zipper. 
and then you can get the center one also with the scissors or something and then also it should also unzip but you're basically going to clear all that paper out okay and have that and uh, flip it over and do the other side as well it should unzip a little bit like a zipper now it should be firm enough to then run a few more stitches down it down those rows to make it more solid and if you've got a zigzag machine all the better run a few zigzags down there just to beef up that walk at the top of it so there it is with four stitches but it's even better if you can zigzag it as well just adds to it and I'm going to sew it together in a similar way as the other one until I get my wig there we go And so there we have it.